Hello everybody, thank you for joining me again today. I am Lee from thecraftyspark.co.uk um, Sorry about the little bit of soprano Lee just then but I nearly fell off the chair. So, <laughs> now I'm actually back on my chair. Let's have a look at what we're going to do today. Well, um, you may or may not have seen a couple of days ago I took part in one stamp at a time's blog hop and I took part as their guest blogger which was a real honour because there are thousands and millions and trillions of crafters in the world and they asked me to be their guest and I was so so proud thank you girls I really really enjoyed myself now when I took part in that guest as a guest blog hop hopper something is caught under my chair what is it hang on let me just try that again oh well that's better yeah when i took part i showed you a project that was rather special that i made a while ago and made again and again and again but i never actually made a video for it so this is the first in a series of three videos to make that project and I know you may be thinking wow that's a lot of videos for one project yes it is but it's rather special as you will know if you had seen on the blog hop if you haven't seen go and have a look at my blog www.thecraftyspark.co.uk and you will see the actual project I'm talking about and you will also be able to hop through and see all the other projects from all the other crafters that took part as well but this is what we're doing today now this was originally well, actually I don't know if she originally designed it I won't be surprised if she did because she's very very clever as Caroline lovely lovely stamp it up demonstrator called caroline hallett now she's brilliant she's absolutely brilliant if you go and have a look at her website crafty hallett she's got some fantastic projects on there and this one is one that she did a while ago that she's made she told us a few times and my goodness when she showed it to us everybody this time it just went crazy now she called it a bag in a box box in a bag bag in a box I can't remember which way around she said but one of the other demonstrators one of the other Stumpin' Up girls Kim Fee who is also a very good friend of Caroline's said you know what this needs to be called the Hallett bag because Caroline once she put this video out and showed everybody how to make it it just took off and went crazy and <laughs> now it's actually known <laughs> everywhere as the Hallett bag it's not even known by whatever it's supposed to be known by everyone just calls it the Hallett bag and as soon as you say to somebody do you like the Hallett bags they know exactly what you're talking about <laughs> so <laughs> well done there Caroline but this is one of those bags but made slightly differently still on the same concept of Caroline's one but I've adjusted the measurements and just changed it up a little bit to fit what I actually want it to do so this is what we're going to be doing today now I'm starting off with a piece of watermelon wonder that measures six and a quarter by six and a quarter and I'm going to score it on all sides at five and a half so five and a half and five and a half and five and a half and five and a half move that out of the way now uh, where is my bone folder <laughs> it's actually where it should be for a change gosh that's got to be a first isn't it that doesn't really happen very much in my world right i'm just folding and burnishing those score lines that i've just made And then we're going to snip the corners and you'll see in just a second why it originally started off as box in a bag or bag in a box whichever it was it will all become clear Let me just 
get rid of these. I'm just notching this corner out just because if you don't, your tabs don't fold so well. It just makes it a little bit easier. All right, there we go. Now, ordinarily, when you make a box, you glue on the back of your tab, you fold it in like that, fold it up and stick it, don't you? Well, not with this one. With this one, you do it a little bit differently. Grab your glue and you put it on the inside. Like that. And then you actually fold it outside. So your tab is going on the outside of the box. All right, because this, I don't know if I said, but this is actually the base of the box. Now, did I put glue? Oh, I did put glue on that one. <laughs> <laughs> I can't find the glue. <laughs> Get around there probably. All right, there we go. Yeah, so this is actually the base of the bag box, box, bag, bag, box. So they go around the outside. Now, usually you wouldn't do that, would you? You would usually put them on the inside. But this time, remember to put them on the outside. And the reason being is it adds strength to the way it's going to be made, which you will see in just a second. Now, the key thing with this box, with this bag, with this box, box, bag, hallet bag, let me just call it the hallet bag, because if I call it the hallet bag, then I never get my words around the wrong way. The key thing with the hallet bag is use glue or really strong tape. Now, this red tape is super, super strong, so this is what I'm going to be using for the main. Now, that's my base. I have then got this. Ta da! What is this? I hear you say. Well, if you were on Facebook a few days back, you would have seen I actually went live on my page. And when I went live on Facebook, I was showing you how to make this. Basically, what I've done is I've taken a piece of Whisper White card. Now, this is the thin stuff, not the thick one. Taken a piece of Whisper White, stamped it using the birthday bloom set which actually matches the paper that I was using when I made the whole project but I've stamped it in blushing bride with this big flower stamp then I filled in the smaller gaps with this little flower and that's watermelon wonder that color but what I actually did was I stamped it off then I stamped it on so I actually stamped onto a piece of scrap paper before I stamped onto this paper because I wanted a much paler image but still the same shade then, can you see these little dots? These little dots are mint macaron. I just wanted a little bit of highlight colour in there, so I just popped a little bit of those in there. Now, this measures five and a half by ten and a quarter. I had to remember that. I've already stuck it together, as you see. I've been trying to save a bit of time, you see. So, five and a half by ten and a quarter and I stuck them both together overlapped them by around about half an inch then on the back I have stuck some of this super strong tape there and there all right because the cards what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to wrap that around there oops like that well, I will do, obviously, in a minute when I've done it. But what I would need to do is just show you the concept of it first. Because once it's stuck on, we're not going to be folding or anything. We're just going to be bending, which isn't something that we generally do, is it, as paper crafters? Now, I also need to figure out what way round I'm going because I'm very good at sticking this round the wrong way. Uh, as I found out the other day when I was making one. Right, I know where I'm going with it now. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and do it up this way so that you can actually see what I'm doing. Do you know what, actually, thinking about it, I'm not going to do that just yet. No, I am not. I am not. I am going to stick some lace on it. That's what I'm going to do. I knew I had to do something else. I just couldn't quite remember what it was I had to do. See, sometimes in my videos I chat to myself trying to remind myself what I'm actually doing in fact I say sometimes most times because <laughs> I've got a memory like a sieve and I'm forever forgetting everything right so uh what am 
am I doing? What am I doing? Oh, I know. I need to go and get the lace. Hang on a sec. I'm just going to stop the video while I run over the other side of the room and grab the lace. Won't be a minute. Right. Got the lace. Unfortunately, got bits of lace because I've only got... I haven't quite got enough lace left, so I've had, I'm going to have to do this in two pieces. When you do yours, do it in one piece. It's work so much better. But I'm going to do it in two pieces. Um, I do have one long piece, but I need that for something else. No, that's all right. We'll go with two. Now, where did I put that tape? That's the base. Where's the tape? Jeez, I put it back. It's got to be a first. Right, so let me pop this on first. I'm just going to put some of this... Nice, super strong, sticky tape. Now, this is now, I'm now working on the front of the box. Bag, bag, it's not a box, it's a bag. The front of the Hallett bag, I am now working on the front of the Hallett bag. Okay, so if I turn over, you see? All right, stick that down. So now if I peel this off, like I said, you're going to have to sort of forgive me for working in two pieces of lace, but really one piece is what you need and you will need a piece of lace that's around about 19 and a bit inches long, 19, 20 inches long. Pop that across the top. Whoops. I'm trying not to stretch it because this lace is it's really tough but it's also really stretchy and I don't want it to stretch. I just want it just to hang nicely. So I'm just being a little bit careful in how I lay it on there. There we go, that's it. Now, I know I've got a bit hanging out there, but it's okay. We're gonna be doubling it over. So with any luck, it's not gonna be seen. I really hope it's not going to be seen. Nothing worse is there when you're part way through a project and then you realise you've run out of something. It's so annoying. Oh, stick on there. There we go. That's better. Super duper. Now you can probably hear my fingers sticking to that. That's okay. It's not a problem because I'm going to put some more over the top of it. So another line, a sticky strip, going over the top like that. And this is going to help hold that lace super duper firmly because it's actually sticking in between those little tiny holes on the lace itself so the tape is sticking to itself making it really nice and firm now the reason for that is where my next bit comes in because what i've got now is lots of strips of card i think to be honest i'm actually one short so i'll have to do another one in a minute um, how many have we got here these are all half an inch wide. Yes, I am. I'm a little bit short. Never mind. I'll do some more in a minute. They're half an inch wide, and these ones are ten and a quarter inches long. So you can either stick them on straight away, like that. You can stick them on the paper, then stick the paper together. You can stick them on after you've stuck the paper together. Whichever way you want to do it, really. Whichever way suits you is better. But I've done it so that I can chop and change because you know what it's like. One day you think, oh, I'll do it this way. And then the next day you think, oh, actually, no, I won't do it this way. And <laughs> if you're anything like me, you're always changing your mind. So I have got one, two, three, four, five, six, six pieces. I actually need eight, which is a bit of a nuisance. But like I said, I'll get another two in a minute. You need eight altogether that are half an inch wide. Six of them you want to be ten and a quarter inches long, two of them eleven inches long. All right, so just, just a bit small, a bit, bit bigger rather, not a bit smaller. Right now, if I peel this off, this oops, 
so difficult to get this covering off. I'm trying to sort of dig at it with my um, my pokey tool, but because it's on the lace, it's taking a little bit longer to get it off. Come off, come off, come off. I bet people who watch my videos, every time I get this stuff out, if you watch me regularly, I bet you sit there and look at it the way I look at it. You look at it and go, oh no, here we go. She's going to take forever to get that backing off. And sure enough, I am going to take forever to get the backing off. Uh, this is the point where I would usually stop the video. Hang on. Right, one more go. If it doesn't work, I'm giving up. I'm stopping the video and then having a private fight with it off the screen. Oh, I nearly had it. I nearly had it. Yes, I've got it. Have I? I think I've got it. Did I get it? Oh, no. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> it's off. It's off. Woo -hoo -hoo. Oh, a little bit of excitement over there. Now, on the back of these, I have also put some double-sided tape, which I know is probably going a bit excessive because it's like loads of layers of double-sided tape. But I just wanted to make sure that these stuck properly on top of the lace and didn't ping off because that would be a bit of a disaster. So if you are quite confident that your tape is super duper strong enough to hold it in place and hold it on there as well, go for it. If like me, you're a little bit cautious, especially as I know the person that I'm giving this to does like to have a bit of a rough and tumble with things. <laughs> oh, bless them. Right, let's just pop that on there. I'm just trying to make it nice and straight so it's going nicely up against the top. There we go. Right, now, I need to make sure that is firmly stuck because it's going over the lace. If it wasn't going over the lace, I wouldn't be so worried. It's just having made these bags before with lace and seeing what happens if you don't stick it down properly, it's always worth spending just that little bit of time just making sure you are properly stuck. I'm pushing really hard, that's why I can't talk properly. <laughs> there we go. <sighs> right. Now, the next bit we need to do is we need to stick this to the base of the bag. I also need to do another couple of strips, don't I? I'll tell you what. Um... Where's those strips? I did have some spare strips, I'm sure I did. Where'd I put them? Oh, there it is. There we go. I knew it was somewhere. Right, so. Um, what are we doing now? Now we have to stick it on to the bottom of the box, babes. Right, what we're going to do... I've got those where I need them. This tape is going to be holding it along there. All right. So we've got to start from the end that doesn't have the double sided tape on that end. All right. So I'm going to pull that off of there. Now, this is where I usually end up making a bit of a mess. So if I, um, do you know what, because I want this bit over the top which I know sounds a bit silly but if I put that there like that, um, I've got some from what I peeled off earlier, oh well, that didn't work did it, <laughs> let's try that again, put that on there like that. Because what I want to do you see, is try and make a nice neat join. Mm, I know. I can do my best, can't I? Not saying it's gonna work, but I can try. Right, so if I peel that off. Now the trick with this is that you roll it round, you don't fold it, okay? So 
be very careful when you're doing it to try not to fold it oopsie daisy there we go that was a good start wasn't it and you oh did i just knock the tripod i just head by it <laughs> one of the legs Duh. <laughs> right let's see i'm going to try and line it up so that it's at the bottom now because this is quite a a large box it's going to need a little bit of sort of man handling if you like so stuck on the one side with this nice strong double-sided tape give it a good stick down with your finger and then hang on let's pull it all off that might make things a bit easier might not it put those there so i don't lose them again. what i'm going to do is roll it now obviously it's going to crease around the corner which is fine because that's going to help to give it the really good shape but I don't want it to crease up the sides as well you see so I'm just taking it through all the way around sticking it down make sure you stick it nice and firmly put your finger inside there and give it a good squish sticking it around again Whoop. now <laughs> This is where I've got it around the wrong way, haven't I? Um, what am I doing? See, I told you I'd get it in a muddle. Right, take that out of there. Don't need that there, do I? Because it's folding around. Hello. <laughs> what I needed to do was find my poke tool again. Take that off of there. I do know what I'm doing, honest. <laughs> Oh, roll it around. And again. Let's turn it out that way now so I can see it a bit easier, can't I? And with this last piece, this is where you need to. I'll put my hand in there. I'm giving it a good squeeze to make sure it's nicely stuck. But I need to fold it around and stick it down. All right which is what I was trying to get lined up properly and failed, as you saw. Oops, let's just get that bit of sticky tape off there because I don't want that there. That's going to end up getting stuck on something. I don't want it stuck on, isn't it? And I'm just going to trim that edge off so that I don't have a bit of white poking out. There we go. Now. Ooh, this is where I get a bit nervous. I'm fold that bit round there. You see that bit's all right because you can fold that bit, so that's not so bad. It's this bit. This is the bit that always worries me because you've got to get it stuck. Oh, uh, hang on. Oop. I'll start at that end. That might be better way. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Like that there, that's it, isn't it? Whoops. Like that. There we go. That's it. There, because what we're trying to do is we're trying to get this nice sort of round look from the top and a square look from the bottom, which if I give it a bit of a squeeze the opposite way, it will gradually find its shape properly I have to sort of give it a minute to sort itself out right there we go so let me move that out of the way for a minute because now what are we after now um, 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 um. do you know what one day I'm going to make a video and be prepared for it that will shock the lot of you, won't it? Actually, I don't want to move that out of the way, do I? What am I doing? We've got to stick the bit around the bottom first. Oh, we will get there. We will get there. Right. Use a bit of your, your stamped on trim bit. Try and get your double sided tape off. <laughs> there we go. That's the one. Right. Now then, let's stick that. I'm actually gonna it's quite good using this bit at the bottom because it can cover up any little mistakes that you've made you see 
very clever, isn't it? Very clever. So you can go on the bottom with that. Let's stick that there. Let's get another one. Take the double sided tape off of that one as well. That can go stick on there. And then that, whoop, hang on, if I just, I wonder if I could peel, uh, can I peel that off? Because then I could stick it down underneath. Oh, look, it's uh, nearly. So what, if you ever stick double-sided tape on and then you want to pull it off, heat it. Because if you heat it up, rather than just trying to pull it like I am, it will actually come apart. I should have heated that up really, shouldn't I? But it's okay, look, it's only a little bit, just a little bit. There we go. Right, so that's given us a nice finish on the bottom. So there's our box, look. If I pull it out just a bit, as we're using it, it will gradually start to sort itself out properly. Now, the other thing that I'm going to be doing is handles. Now, there's we need the ones that have got the stamping on both sides. I hope it's not going to get too dark in here. The sun came out just a minute ago, so I pulled the blind. And now it's gone a little bit dark, hasn't it? Um, should I open the blind again? No, I know what I'll do. A minute. Come on. There we go. Let's put a little bit of light on the subject. There, that's better. That'll do. Uh, right, so these are our handles. Now, this is where I got a little bit carried away when I was doing this because I have got these brads. And these brads are actually the Stampin' Up brads. Um, and they are the antique brads. As you can see, I've been having a little play with them. Now these ones, these nice bright shiny silver ones, used to look like that. Can you see the difference? That one's quite dark, that one's quite shiny. Well, I wanted silver ones, but I wanted silver decorative ones. I didn't want silver vintage dark ones. So, what I did, and if you are going to do this yourself, be incredibly careful. I bought some, I had some acetone, because I always have acetone in my craft room for <laughs> various reasons. But I had some acetone, and I actually soaked them in the acetone, and then got a little brush, a little toothbrush, and brushed it. And it actually got all that dark paint, stain, wax, whatever it is, I'm not sure what it is. But it actually took it all off. So I was left with nice shiny brads. <laughs> Quite pleased with that. Right, we need to put our handles on now. So, how should we put our handles? Should we put them there? Because they're going to be going like this, you see. So, if we put them... Mm, that's going to... That's got, actually, we'll go this side so that the join isn't on the front. That's probably a better idea, isn't it? There we go, squish it down a bit. Squishy, squishy. Right, now, mind your fingers when you do this. If you have a hole punch, you could use a hole punch. I'm just gonna be a bit cautious. Let's stick a pokey tool through it. <laughs> and try not to stick my fingers in it at the same time. There we are. Oh, now, poke your bread through. Now the good thing about this is the way Clever Caroline designed these means that when you're finished you're not going to see that. She's so clever isn't she? There's one. Make sure your handle's going, whoops, you lost my memory bread, so make sure your handle's going the right way and you've got your hearts pointing the way you want it to point. Try and get roughly the same width there and there and there and there. It's not easy, I know, because obviously you've got curves at the top and straights at the bottom. 
but if you can try and line it up as best you can it just gives you a need to finish at the end so poke that through there Ooh, try not to get my fingers now if you suddenly hear someone yelling hello that will be my son who's just come home from school he usually comes bounding up the stairs and shouts at me but one of the other boys is downstairs hopefully he'll say to him Got to be quiet. Don't make too much noise. <laughs> it's not very good at being quiet though. Right, so we've got those ones that side. Now I'm going to try and line it up the other side. So I'm going to grab a pencil. Let's see if we can do it. It's going to be. about there and about there I think ish yeah that's quite close right let's make sure I've got my hearts going the same direction yeah that's it so that's gonna go about there I think yeah, that's it, that there. Now, I did, when I um, made one of these the other day, so I actually made a blue one the other day for something else. When I made the one the other day, I actually stamped the base as well as the paper. You know the, um, oh, put on, put on, like this. It was this kind of thing but blue you see how that pattern's on there oh, not very well can you there you go that's better isn't it so it's very very subtle but it's also very very pretty and i did actually stamp the insides this base bit as well with the bag that i did the other day but i deliberately haven't done this one because you can get to the point where you overload and things end up getting a bit too fussy and obviously if it gets too fussy rather than looking pretty it actually looks messy which is not what i'm trying to achieve here so just poke that one in there as well now whoops turn that round so that it can't be seen now this is where Caroline got very clever because the other two pieces that we have also with the stamped hearts on take the backing off your double sided tape and it's going to be stuck to cover that up I need to kind of get it at an angle and lean it on my podgy tummy so that I can see what I'm doing because otherwise it will end up getting a bit wonky once I've stuck it on there I will lay it back down again so you can see it there we are look clever is that it's covered it up so you cannot see the back of those brads but you can see a really fancy cutesy bag let's just do the other side so the same thing you probably noticed i'm sort of folding it in the middle because i don't want these joins the end joins in the middle there i just want them over at the side so they're out the way also helps to make sure the breads are covered up properly so if i just oops that one's not twisting turn please turn please there we go that's it just needed to twist it out of the way a bit pop that on there and then i just need to stick it around the inside like that and then the same on the other side like that 
there we go. So, how about that for a really cool bag? Isn't that a really neat gift bag? Well, you'd be really free if somebody gave you something in there, wouldn't you? And the handles come together perfectly. So, there is our project. The first, as I've said, the first of three. If you have been on the blog hop, you will see what the rest of the projects are going to be. If you haven't been on the blog hop, go and have a look because I can guarantee that when you do see the rest of them, you will desperately want to come and watch the rest. <laughs> I will say no more here. I will just leave you in suspense. But everything that I've used to make this and everything that I'm going to be using to make the next couple of projects that go with it are all going to be available by clicking the link, links rather, plural, clicking the links at the bottom of the blog post that goes with this little series. All right, so... When you go onto my blog, just scroll down to the bottom of the page underneath all the photos. There are rather a lot of photos on there, but just scroll down to the bottom and you'll see the links that you'll need to actually make these lovely, lovely, yummy, yummy, yummy little things. And then somebody will have an exceptionally wonderful birthday, just like the certain somebody is going to have that I'm going to be giving this to. <laughs> I will say no more just in case they know who they are. Right, that's it for today. <laughs> Thank you again for joining me. I will see you in a couple of days' time with the next video in this series. But until then, take care, look after yourself, enjoy the rest of your day, and I will see you very soon. Bye!